what you're looking at behind me is the past, the Volkswagen Passat, the present, a bigger SUV with a diesel engine, and of course also the future, because this one is a hybrid. So why did I say that this was both the past and the future? Well, the past because we used to drive and buy cars like these ones, lower family cars, but of course today everything has to be an SUV. Unfortunately, I do have to break the news to you that if you wish to have a lower fuel consumption and a better ride overall, you want not an SUV, but a normal car. So that is going to be the future because with a hybrid car, of course, it's important to have a lower fuel consumption. Well, that's the whole point. So if I open the hood or the, uh, the lid, uh, you will find a smaller, well, smaller petrol engine, one and a half liters of turbo petrol and the hybrid part, which has all the electronics and electric stuff. So it's a smaller battery and an electric motor. And of course, that also means that apart from filling it up with petrol, where you usually do it, you also fill it up with electricity here at the front. And just in case you're in a festive mood still, Volkswagen has taken care of that. Here's a spent rocket. Not really sure where that came from. What hides underneath here is a 13 kilowatt hour battery. And Volkswagen did something quite interesting. The system will only charge the battery up to 90% and discharge down to 10%. And if you know anything about lithium batteries, you know this is really good for their life expectancy. The internal combustion engine can turn off two cylinders if four are not required. The only things really telling you this Passat is a hybrid on the outside are the GTE badge and blue brake calipers, and that charging flap on the front. The test model had lovely white leather inside, and I always love beige or white. Wouldn't mind having it in my own car if it wasn't just so very easy to get dirty. The rear passengers will enjoy plenty of space, while still having their own climate controls and USB connectors for cell phones, tablets and similar life support systems. So why was I saying that this is the future? Where some of you might probably say, wait a second, what are you talking about? The future are electric cars, not hybrids. We need to uh, get rid of internal combustion engines completely. And you're correct, but that's further up in the future than this. Because between electric cars and internal combustion, is the hybrid and this is the near future not electric cars because if we all changed over to electric cars right now we don't have the infrastructure we don't have the charging stations and we certainly don't have the power generation we'll need a lot better batteries for that not just in electric cars but in uh, for actual storage of renewables and of course fusion which is always 30 to 50 years away unfortunately so let's hope something happens on that account but anyway until then until fusion and practically free energy which will really revolutionize everything we have this the future
So how is this Passat different from your normal Passat? Well, the first thing is obvious, the hybrid system. But my real question is, how is it different? How's it, how does it drive? Does it drive any differently? Is there, are there any major differences and so on and so forth? And how many times can I say different as well? Anyway, um, the nice thing about this hybrid is that it doesn't really feel like a completely different car. It is, there are slight differences, but it's just your normal Passat. It's comfortable, it's very spacious, especially in the back. You've got all the tech available, like matrix LEDs, big infotainment screen, uh, digital instrument cluster, and so on and so forth. Heated seats, which is very nice. Still no ventilated seats at the moment. And the digital instrument cluster is now on a slightly smaller screen than it was available before. Go figure. Anyway, the nice thing is that, like I said, you can get into this car from your normal internal combustion engine, car, and just drive like you would normally. The system, the computers, they take uh, control of everything, of all the busy work, so you don't have to think about it. There are little nuances you can uh, play around with in your mind and try to drive according to them if you wish, which is probably a good idea if you've uh, chosen a hybrid, but uh, you don't have to. So just sit in, start, drive off. So the whole idea of a hybrid, of course, you probably most likely already know that, is that one, you have a normal engine for your longer drives. If you need to go, I don't know, 500, 600 kilometers somewhere, it's not a problem. You've got an engine at the front which uh, guzzles dinosaur juice and you can also fill it up with such if you run out quite quickly on a petrol station because this, of course, uses a 1.4 liter turbo petrol. But the nice thing about this is you also have a small-ish battery. It's not tiny, but it's small-ish and an electric motor, which on its own is enough to drive this car around 50 kilometers just on electric power alone. So it's not a mild hybrid where you have barely any range at all. It just helps you drive a little bit. This can actually drive on electric mode. And the lovely thing about the hybrid, if I go back to that, is that one, you can do longer distance drives. And on the other hand, if you mostly drive in a city, you also have that option so you can drive just on electrics alone. Or you can use the hybrid mode, which will leave the system to figure out whether you need the petrol engine or you need the electric motor. And they will both work in unison, uh, you know, helping each other when needed. So right now, for example, when I'm cruising at 50 and when the road levels out, the uh, computer will probably shut off the engine. There it goes. The engine is shut off and now it's using just electric power. And now if I give it the boot a little bit more, no, it won't because I have the limiter on. No, and never mind. But if I did, it would probably uh, turn on the normal petrol engine again. So what is the reason you will buy a hybrid car? Well, of course, it's the fuel consumption. As fuel prices go up and as taxes on uh, CO2 and such go up, and of course you want to be more eco-friendly, we tend to shy away from gas guzzling engines or diesel guzzling or whatever. So a hybrid, in theory, should allow me to have a much better fuel consumption than usual. Now, I did a bit of a torture test because I thought driving just on petrol, okay, fine, just buy a normal petrol car then. Driving just on electric also isn't really relevant here because you've got about 50 kilometers range depending on your speed of course and how you drive and that's not going to tell us much it's got 50 kilometers range with its battery that's it but the hybrid mode is really the interesting one because we want to see how this car would be in everyday driving so what i did was i completely discharged the battery completely it was flat it said that i had zero range with the battery and then I drove it uh, just on petrol to see how it would do and what it would do. Would I still get any help from the electric motor? And the answer is yes, sort of. The car is 
pretty smart in trickling charge into the battery every now and then but also mostly which is very nice it uses regenerative braking so if I let go and I'm in B mode right now which means that I have a lot of regenerative braking instead of actually using your brakes it uses the electric motor and it inverts the phase and the electric motor acts as a generator and it slows you down and fills up some of the batteries not much of course but it will so that's pretty nice and um, with that test with a completely flat battery and driving on motorways and such I managed to get it down to 5.8 liters per 100 kilometers not amazing but it's actually not that bad if you think about that this is a larger car a turbo petrol engine up at the front and um, I was driving reasonably not horribly economically and not horribly sporty and of course it also had to charge the battery every now and then by using the actual engine so there was more of a load on the engine so 5.8 not too bad but like I said that was with a completely flat battery what about actual proper hybrid mode so if you'll excuse my squinting I'm getting blinded by the Sun here but what about proper hybrid driving well I filled up the battery uh, it was pretty much full the range said 50 kilometers with the battery and I reset my uh, trip computer and I started driving in hybrid mode in a city now of course that's not optimal because in a city at lower speeds you will probably want to use the e-mode and select only electrical drive which means that the car will only use the electric motor to propel itself to accelerate but of course like we said 50 kilometers range of that with a full uh, battery but in hybrid mode I wanted to see how it'll do things in a city and it was quite interesting um, I would wish it was a little bit more aggressive with using the electric engine it was a bit too aggressive on the other side it, it likes to turn on the petrol engine a little bit too soon for my liking now the good thing here is that on this digital instrument cluster you've got a pretty clever um, tachometer which also includes the electric range or power so you've got the charge area when you're uh, braking regenerative, regeneratively you've got the power area which is the blue area where you can see that it's actually using the electric engine only and depending on how hard you press on the right pedal you'll see that that moves up and it, the closer it moves to zero rpm the closer you are to actually starting up and using the petrol engine so if I press it more there we go it was past zero and it's turned on the petrol engine so it's really clever doing that but anyway enough waffle 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 how much did I get what kind of a fuel consumption did I get in a city in uh, light to medium traffic uh, but you know at lower speeds and a lot of traffic lights and so on I got a best cons total consumption average of 2.8 liters per 100 kilometers so not bad not bad I would have liked a little lower but like I said if you're really going for fuel economy in a city you're going to want to use the electric only mode where basically you've got zero fuel consumption because you're only using electricity so it's really nice that they do give you the option of pressing this button and using just the electric mode but really one of the nicest things about a hybrid car apart from the fact that you don't really have range anxiety is that you have this lovely option of driving through a city on just electric power alone if you have enough uh, electric range of course but it's I'm not saying the petrol engine is very loud it's actually quite quite nice and refined unless you're booting it and you're probably being blinded by the Sun now I do apologize about that um, but it's it's just so nice when it just shuts off and you only have the electric motor working it's like really like being in an electric car where it's all silent and nice so that's it's really relaxing so in the end it's like this 
my colleague didn't like this hybrid at all. He's got a 240 horsepower diesel Passat, which I think is a lot of fun and a very, very good car. And of course, he'll say, you know, this is not enough power. Although I will agree with him some, uh, with something. The, this hybrid only has front wheel drive, despite the fact that it is an electric engine, which I think should have been in the back to power the rear wheels. But I'm assuming this current platform doesn't really have, I don't know, the space or whatever for that. But anyway. Uh, so it is annoying when you want full power and it, you know, the, the road is slightly damp and you suddenly figure out that, well, you've got no grip at all. But he doesn't like it at all. He got an average consumption of 7.5 liters per 100 kilometers. But I do have to say he was probably booting it quite a lot. But what I wish to say with that is, you know, you, I always tell people if you watch my reviews this is just my opinion obviously I can tell you how the car feels and drives and so on and so forth but you have to go and test it yourself see what you think about it if you're buying it don't just believe my word however what I really want to say is this car can be just as hungry for fuel if you're booting it all the time but I'm assuming if you'll be buying a hybrid car that's not really uh, something on your mind. Even though this does have a GTE mode, which means that it'll give you all the power of the electric engine and all the power of the petrol engine. It's basically sport mode. And um, it's quite sprightly, but it's that front wheel drive that kind of kills it a lot of the times, unless it's not completely dry. So, final verdict. Well, my final verdict is I really like this car. It's very nice. I mean, you know, it's a Passat. It's got a very nice steering wheel, comfy seats, lots of space, lots and lots of uh, equipment choice, and so on and so forth. But the whole hybrid system, I like it. I like having a certain amount of electric range because, like I said before, it's very relaxing um, to only drive on electric, like right now. And the, and the um, computer system does a pretty good job of um you know balancing that even though like i said if i give it a little bit more but there we go petrol engine already coming online petrol engine online oh well but mm, the other problem is the price it's it's fairly expensive so um yeah you do have to have that in mind i usually don't talk about price and i like to just talk about the car but there you go I will give you the price as well. But as far as the car goes, I think it's lovely. My colleague doesn't like it. There you go. I like hybrids. The hybrid Passat starts at 46,500 euros. The one with all of the extras ticked will up that cost to 63,000 euros.